I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be looking at the chemistry of falling in love. One of the things that people often don't think about is how our brain is basically hijacked once we feel attracted to somebody. Yes, it is hijacked. And we really almost become like drug addicts over this new person and the new person is the only one that can give us that right. fix. Uh, hi hijacked by hormones. Yeah, so Margaret's got a great presentation today that she's gonna talk about this because it's good to understand what our body is going through because when you can understand it, you could understand why it's so difficult for you to think straight or what's going on with yeah. you. And don't, don't think about forever in this state. Now I know we have talked about this a lot and we keep doing it, but I like this article. It was, it's brief, but it just says things a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. So you know from us now that our brains are wired to want to fall in love. There's nothing we like better than the bliss of, and euphoria of that mm -hmm. early stage of being in love. Yeah. The feel-good chemicals flood your brain at each of the three stages, and that's what I, why I liked this article. It gave us three. Lust at first, my God, he's cute, right? Mm -hmm. um, attraction, where he's the most wonderful thing on earth, or she is. And then finally, real attachment. And each of those stages is a little different. Being blinded by love brings out parts of our personality that were dormant. Okay? And it makes us more willing to take risks and try new things. Suppose your partner is into something you've never experienced. They like to go skydiving or surfing or out to the theater a lot. There could be all sorts of things. And it's very exhilarating to have new parts of your personality activated. Um, the state of attraction ends when we start to see our partner not as an idealized person, but as a real person, mm -hmm. with all the faults and shortcomings that all of us human beings have. Unless it's Margaret or myself. That's right, in which case, just <laughs> our perfection just so glows that no one has to go through this. Um, people, people just clicked off right there. Yeah, right. Uh, that's enough of this. <laughs> Those two fools are at it again. Um, once your partner starts to become real to you, um, then you have some decisions to make. And these are hard decisions mm -hmm. because, let's remember, you've been drugged by your, your internal system. Um, you've painted an idealized picture of this person. And you've probably begun to really feel some real attraction because you really do begin to understand who they really are. So the other thing is you're really starting to be attached and mm -hmm. this can be a very scary period when the magic kind of wears off oh yeah and you have to decide do i really want to make a commitment to this person mm -hmm. and you don't have to say i do at this point but you certainly have to make a decision to continue or not continue mm -hmm. um it's kind of yeah the the denouement um, and you begin to discover good things and bad things. Oh my goodness, he's even smarter than I thought. Mm -hmm. You know, oh my God, look how many things he's good at. He can fix anything. Mm -hmm. And my cat likes him. <laughs> okay? The other thing is we begin to see problems. Um, there are big ones like addiction um, or major depression or anxiety. And then less awful ones. We all have faults. He's always late. Yeah, he's always late. Mm -hmm. He's duly apologetic, but he's always late. Mm -hmm. um, but we can't change our partner, and it's really good to always keep that in mind. We cannot change, change our partner or rescue him or her. 
And yeah. we're going to talk more about rescuing in another presentation. So that we have to decide if we want to accept them as they say, warts and all. Yep. Do I love this person enough to take them with their faults and with their good point parts? Do I like the whole package? And if you do great, you can go on. And if you don't, oftentimes people break up. Yeah. And it's worse if you're trying to change or rescue your partner. And I hear that one. But I can help her. I can help him. But you can't be in a relationship with him or her if they're not willing to do their part. Do you think on some level people want to be caretakers because it puts them in a, a feeling of power? It can be that. And just as commonly is if you were a caretaker in your family of origin. And I ask people that very directly. I can think of one woman in particular who took such wonderful care of her partner. He didn't have to worry about a thing. And I remember if I, when I asked her if she were a caretaker in her family of origin, and it turned out that there was a disabled sibling who she took a great deal of care of. Mm -hmm. Now, it does put you in a more powerful position. There is that. Um, but I find an awful lot of the time people are trained to be caretakers. Yeah. Now, in that case, it was obvious because there was a disabled family member. But you often find out that they had an anxious or depressed parent who somehow depended on them for support. So I think we, we kind of happen into whatever it is we've been trained for in our family of origin. Mm. And it would be really important to know that so that you didn't go around finding people who needed to be cared for. And that would feel familiar to you. It's a role you know how to perform. And, and the other thing that I'm thinking is like, if you're a caretaker, it's not like we're on equal grounds. That's right. And I never have to worry about being smothered and trapped. Right. Because I'm taking care of you uh, on yeah. your... I'm in, I'm in charge here. Yeah. Yeah. On Absolutely. these terms. Absolutely. And then I, when the closeness comes, you yeah. know, you don't have to worry about it when you're the caretaker. No, you don't. No, you don't. And you can complain if the person you took such wonderful care of doesn't want you. How in ungrateful of him or her. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, and I hear that. Um, but at this point, if you want to stay together, both of you need to have a commitment to work with each other as whole people. Mm -hmm. Nobody's all good. Nobody's all bad. We're all a mix. And I think people tend to idealize love and partners and all of that. And it's not helpful. I want somebody who knows and likes the real me. I don't want to have to, you know, hide parts of me or be someone I'm not. So you want someone who likes you really, honest to God, warts and all. Yeah. Okay. And, and the other thing that I wonder is the people that have serious attachment issues, mm -hmm. as soon as they start to attach to you... All their other attachment issues come up. And then they're out of there, and right? And then they're out of there. And sometimes you hear people even say it. I don't like the way you make me feel. Um... I don't know even how to describe it, but you make me feel really strange. In other words, you've kind of awakened parts of me that I had put aside. Mm. And you wouldn't know it in the beginning. No, you wouldn't know it in the beginning, but it's when you start to attach that sometimes you begin to find feelings you've never felt before or you haven't felt since you were really, really young. And we're talking about attachment to parents. Yep. Um, and if you're not used to being attached, it can be really scary, really scary. And you hope you have a partner who knows not to go too fast. And if there's a piece of advice I give more often than any other, that's it. Don't move too fast. Let yeah. the process happen normally. Don't rush it. I know you're anxious, but rushing it won't fix it. What do you think people are scared of? You say, you know, it's scary to get attached. What is it that they're really scared of? Abandonment or being smothered. And we live on a continuum from being afraid of being abandoned on one hand or smothered on the other. Mm. And what we mean by smothered is that you don't have any individuality. You don't have your 
you really your freedom to make decisions for yourself. Mm -hmm. This person is going to make decisions for you. And while part of that might be very attractive, particularly with a caretaker, mm -hmm. um, you don't want to be, you know, told you're not making your own decisions either. Sure. So we try to live as best we can in between. And you can have it both ways and still be healthy. Yeah. Yeah. You can do it. But the unfortunate thing is that in the beginning, both people are so excited over each other. Oh, yes. And then it becomes like a drug because the, the chemicals being released right. in our brain right. basically take over. Yeah. You don't see red flags in the other person. No. They don't see red flags in you. So you want to learn all of this stuff before you start to date because then you're going to realize, okay, when I get into this, I'm not going to see the red flags. That's right. But that I would. Right. So, so very early on, there are some questions you need to ask yourself. Right? Where I was going. Oh, I'm sorry. Go but ahead. No, no, go ahead. That's exactly where I was going. I was going to say, um, one of the first questions you have to ask, and I know this comes as a surprise, is this person free to be in a relationship with me? And that doesn't mean are they married or attached to someone else. But it can. Um, but it can, yeah. yeah, even though they're not mentioning that. Um, but it often means from their family of origin. Um, there are families who don't let their family members go easily. And if you're dating someone who might marry you and want you to go live somewhere else, the family can get very frightened and do the best they can to sabotage the relationship. And you can bet this happens a lot more than you think. Yes, it does. And I would say it probably comes up in my Skypes every day. I would too. At least, at least one time blatantly and some other times kind of subtly. And people say to you, what do you mean their family? Their family loves me. They love you as long as you're just dropping by for tea. But if it gets really serious that, you know, you might take their family member away, yep. then, you know, it becomes a whole other thing. And there may be 25 things that are wrong with you that weren't wrong with you before. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, you're this and you're that. So, it's not easy. It's not easy. And what aggravates this whole issue is moving too fast. I often hear, you know, oh, we hit it off right away, we were in love in about two seconds, and, and this is the most wonderful thing on earth. It's not a good indicator that the relationship will last. No. It's a red flag. Even though the last thing it feels like is a red flag. So don't rush relationships. Yep. It rarely has a happy ending. And just realize when you start to get interested in somebody, the chemicals are going to come out, the hormones are going to come out, yeah. and they're going to hijack you, and they're going to hold you hostage. But if you start to have feelings you've never had before, one thing you know is that the attachment is real. And give those feelings a chance. Look at them, process them, feel them, try and name them. It can be overwhelming, though. It can be. It's very, very scary and overwhelming, particularly if you come from a family that wasn't into expressing or describing feelings. Yeah. All right. But people will say to me over and over and over again, why did he or she break up with me? Partly because you moved too fast. Yeah. That happens a lot. A lot. Learn now before you try and either reattract your ex or start dating other people. Right. Because... Moving too fast is going to sabotage both of those, yep. right? Yep. Okay. Of course, when you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, AskCraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Margaret is also available for Skype coaching. Yes, I'll be happy to talk with you if you sign up to talk with me. Just click on Margaret on the top of the website. But be sure to subscribe to the channel. That's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.